I really like scripture. Uh, I do, which is, is, is good considering my position. I, I've spent a lot of time, a lot of my life reading scripture. I think it's great. I think it's neat. Um, and, and, and so I hope you don't think I'm being too disrespectful when I say what I'm about to say. Um, but uh, Revelation, that book that we just read from, it is so weird. I hope, I hope. Have you guys ever read straight through Revelation? I did it when I was like 12. Worst mistake in my head sleep for weeks. <laughs> there are monsters with eyes in all directions. There are dragons whose tails mark, like knock out part of the stars in the sky, which I'm not sure the physics that I don't understand. But um, it is weird. Um, just that's all. I'm, it's just weird. And I mean that again with all due respect. The problem is this: uh, Revelation is a particular genre of literature. And, uh, and we have things in the Bible like history or narratives or poetry or letters or even genealogies, things like that. And we have some stuff in our culture um, that we can kind of relate to. And so it makes sense. Okay, we, we get it. Um, Revelation is called apocalyptic literature. We don't get a lot of that kind of stuff in our culture. And so we don't know what to do with it when we read it. When we read about the monsters with the eyes in all directions and the dragons... We're not quite sure. It's a little bit less common. And so um, the problem is this. When you, when you take it out of its genre, you come away with some really weird stuff. Um, and people have created some really weird stuff uh, with, with Revelation. Have you guys ever heard of Harold Camping? Has anybody? Um, some, of, some of you have, because you're smiling. Um, Harold Camping uh, has predicted the end of the world some say 12 times, very publicly he's done it three times. Um, and by very publicly, I mean billboards, radios, TV ads, the whole millions have been spent because the end of the earth was coming. And it's because Harold Camping had taken um, some parts of scripture, some revelation, some Isaiah, and um, come up with sort of a mathematical understanding. Um, now, never mind that Jesus outright said, no one knows when I will be coming back. Don't even think about it. I don't even know. Forget that part of things. Um, Harold was convinced that there's still secretively co encoded into scripture when the end of times will come. And it has meant that three times, twice in 2011, incidentally, <laughs> <laughs> very embarrassing scene. The fact is we can't read scripture with the same eyes. <coughs> different books are to be read different ways. It's, it's, it's a collection of really beautiful art forms. Here's what I'd say. Let me, let me, let me explain it to you this way. Let's say that uh, Debbie and I are, it's our anniversary. And let's say we've gone to a nice romantic dinner. And we get in the car and I have made, uh, I've burned a CD. A romantic CD for the ride home. And uh, I look at her, smile, I press play on that CD. Just wait. <laughs>
saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first Jerusalem, the, excuse me, the first heaven and the first earth, they passed away. The sea was no more. I saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. This is it! It's all coming together! It's perfect! Old heaven and new earth, they're coming. That's great because this place is a mess. It's broken. People are hurt. This is great. The sea was no more. Now that might sound awful to us, but we need to know to a, to a first century Palestinian mind, all like the ocean, any sort of still water, um, that was the, that was kind of an icky place. So moving water, like a river or a brook, that was that was beautiful. That was living water would be another term you would hear. But you hear you see like a lake or an ocean, especially deep ones, and it was we didn't really understand it. And so a lot of times it's where it's where death went. It's where, um, you know, you would hear the grave, or you would hear Hades, or you would hear the depths. And we're talking about these ocean depths because we don't understand them. It's, it's weird. Matter of fact, just this is for fun, that story where Jesus, you know, cast all the, the um, demons into the pits and they run off the cliff, that made sense to that audience because they ran into the depths, into the waters. They were going back home. So, so, so we see this, that sea was no more, death is no more. Those scary, icky places, they got away. There's the holy city, Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. One, things, one, one of the things that, that, that great orators would do at the time, great speakers, they would speak magnificently about a great city. And it was sort of how they showed off. So you talk about Athens and its wisdom. We talk about Rome and how great it was. <coughs> well, here we talk about Jerusalem. There's a new Jerusalem. This is the holy place. Everything's finally getting be better. It's now. And then I read verse 3. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He is among them. Well, that, well it's like Jesus, right? So we're talking about that now, right? And, then, and, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. Okay, we really are talking about now. I sort of got excited. It's about Jesus, God with the mortals, and then verse 4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Uh, death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. The first things have passed away. And that was struggling for me, because from what I can tell, those things are still around. Um, there's still pain. There's still loss. There's still crying. Debbie watched like three episodes of that show Parenthood last week. I promise you, they're still crying. Still <laughs> lots of crying. So are we talking about the future here? Is that what this is about? It's about some other time that's just going to happen and wait? Is that what Revelation is about? You remember that story where Jesus goes into a synagogue and the hand of the scroll and says, hey, read this to everybody, and he pulls out the scroll and he reads from Isaiah. Um, the passage he read from was Isaiah uh, 61. Here's, here's what he read. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has appointed me. He sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release the prisoners, proclaim the year of God's favor. favor. It's Jubilee talk. It's out, of, it's out of Leviticus 25. Just like this Revelation passage is Jubilee talk. And for those who haven't really heard of Jubilee, um, here, was, here was the setup. Revelation, excuse me, Leviticus 25 um, instructs the Israelites every seven years to have, now you know, like you've got the Sabbath every seven days, when you rest. You don't work, you rejuvenate, you heal. Well, every seven years, there was a year that was Sabbath, and that was where you would let your, your um, fields, you couldn't plant your fields or plow your fields. You just lived off of whatever grew from last year's crop, and you let things rest and heal. Happened every seven years. Well, every seven times seven, um, it would be the 49th year. You would have that Sabbath year, and then they called for the year of jubilee. So you had a second year, and it was like a super rest year. It's not a technical term; it's one I just now made up. But the idea was this: everybody resets. And that year of Jubilee, people who had gotten an intractable poverty that became almost a generational thing, it stopped. And their family's land was returned back to them. Their debts were forgiven. Slaves would become slaves during that 50 years were free. 
People who had become indentured servants because they couldn't pay their bills. Free. Everything. Free. We reset. We start again. It was this incredible structure that was kind of built into a society. There was just one problem. The Israelites never once in all of Scripture did. Never one time. And they fully pull out the hair of Jubilee. Matter of fact, um, they even try in sort of modern history. There are stories of Israel trying, like the government trying to sort of reclaim this whole habit, just trying to get it right this time, because we failed all the time before, but maybe this time we'll get it. And they've tried to put it in their system, but um, when they've tried, people who had much to lose got the loopholes. It didn't work. We've never gotten it right. But I still think it's in here for a reason. It's a crazy idea, Jubilee. It's just like this vision back in Revelation. It's a peek at what we're going for, and it's silly. It's a long shot. Everything's better. Everyone's treated with love. No more crying or hurt. This is what we're waiting on. This is that crazy idea of Advent. We work toward it despite all the evidence that says otherwise. And we actually think this is something that can and should be done. And it's a long shot. My, uh, my, my cousin, Chelsea, uh, there's, there's a story in that part of the family. My, my aunt got pregnant when she was 16. Um, and uh, it was obviously a difficult time um, in her life, uh, but she certainly did the best, and I, I think a very good job at raising her kids. And um, everybody sort of circled around and prayed and helped, and said, this will not happen again. We will help. And sure enough, when her daughter turned 16, she got pregnant. And so we said, okay. And, and, and she got down with Chelsea, my, my second cousin, I guess. And so we rallied around Chelsea. And we said, this will not happen again. We will love her. We will protect her. We will support her. This won't happen again. When Chelsea turned 16, she got pregnant. And so we have rattled, rattled, uh, rallied around that daughter. And we have said, this won't happen again. We will support. We will love. We will do the audacious thing that says, this can stop. And we're going to live like it will. And you know what? Chelsea has been doing pretty hard work. And she has a mom who, uh, I mean, we had a girl when she was 16. Um, and, and she got into some pretty awful drugs. And a matter of fact, she went to jail. And it ended up being one of the best things that ever happened to her because she's been out for um, a few months now, and she's been clean. And we had this, I mean, just a month ago, I had this incredible conversation with my mom about Chelsea and her mom, Nikki, and we were so excited, and it's just, this is what happens when you just keep living like it's Jubilee, when nothing's Jubilee. I got a call from my mom two days ago, and Nikki has relapsed. Chelsea's pregnant again. All evidence says we are crazy. And once again, my family will say, we will love this kid, we will help babysit, we will support financially, we will do whatever, and we'll do it again, and we'll do it as many times. But we will not listen to the evidence that says, she believes a stupid idea. Because one day, just like this revelation story, just like this story that Jesus said, one day it's going to work. One day this thing that we keep acting like, oh, it's in the future, but we're supposed to act like it now, and it's kind of fuzzy. One day it's today. And we practice until it is. One day we get it right. One day things fall into place. This Christmas we celebrate the birthday of a boy that came into this world over 2,000 years ago. One day, we'll really, there really will be a new heaven and a new earth, but until that happens, we'll point to it. Because we'll expect it. Because we'll live like it's coming. This time. This time will be the year. 
this time will be the time that I love my neighbor who has no respect for my privacy or property. <clears throat> this time will be the time that I love my husband even though he's a bum. This time will be the time that I love my wife even though she's a nag. This time will be the time that I love that person who I just can't help but grip my teeth when they're around. This time, this time, this time, we will live like the day is here. That is, we are a bunch of crazy people, Kingston. <laughs> For several reasons, but let's call it what it is. <clears throat> I gotta thank God for a little bit crazy. Because otherwise, we would have quit believing in this time. We would quit declaring the fact that God put on skin and sandals and came to this earth and gave us a different option. It's almost Christmas. And God is doing a new thing, just like we've said all the time. There's a baby being born, there's a new heaven, there's a new earth. Maybe this time, maybe this time we'll once again live as if it's this time. Amen? <laughs>